guys so i promised you that i would do a vlog about my move from london to dubai and i decided that there's so many places in london that i love but the o2 is definitely one of them and the reason why i love the o2 is because this is the place where you know it's it's brighter according to their logo right it's where you get to see celebrities like beyonce and pink and back in the day the spice girls performing but for me the performance is the end result of a process that most of us don't get to see. We get to see the end result of the glitz and the glamour and we get to think, oh my God, Beyonce is amazing. But we don't see the process to that performance. My journey from London to Dubai, my decision to um, leave London and go and live in Dubai is part of that process to take me to the next level of success. So there's two reasons why I decided to go. The first reason is um, very personal. I wanted my nine-year-old daughter, Angel, to be closer to her father. I personally didn't grow up with my biological father. I grew up with an amazing man who some people might call my stepdad to me, he's my dad, right? I grew up with an amazing man, but he wasn't my biological father. And as a youngster, I often felt rejected by my biological father. I often felt heartbroken that he wasn't around and I didn't want Angel growing up with that feeling so the first reason was to make her closer to her dad. The second reason that I decided to move to Dubai was opportunities and I saw a few years back before the pandemic that Dubai represented in my career in the industry that I work in just opportunity and I think it's so important when it comes to times in our career and our lives where we go and we seek and we get curious about new possibilities but it's three things I suppose that I've learned over the last three four months as I've been preparing this move um, and I want to break down these three things for you today first thing that I discovered is that comfortability can breed mediocrity. You know, I'm 42 years old. In London, um, I have my friends, my family. I lived just outside of London, down by the seaside, in a very beautiful house. And the house had everything I needed. It had a gym, I could work for my house in quite a big office space. I had a prayer room. Um, I had a beautiful 100-foot garden. I have some of the you know, kind of trappings that people desire. I would drive a Range Rover, and you guys have probably seen pictures of my Range Rover not once, but twice, right? I loved my house. It was palatial, it was elegant, it was chic, it was me. I loved it, I was comfortable. But just because you're comfortable doesn't mean you have to stay where you are. In fact, sometimes the very comfortability is the thing that keeps you stagnant. And to get to the next level, you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable and so that's tip number one tip number two is that there is never a perfect time i went to dubai on my christmas holiday i thought i was going to be back by mid january and i made a decision whilst i was in dubai to stay and see whether or not this is something that me and angel could do as a permanent move i literally pulled the rug from under my own feet I know those of you might be thinking of leaving your job or starting a business or moving to a new country or waiting for the perfect time. And I'm here to tell you there is no such thing as the perfect time. I was dating somebody who is amazing, like one of the most beautiful human beings that I've met in a very long time, both physically as well as, you know, his heart was beautiful. And I decided to make a decision to pull the rug from underneath my feet and stay in Dubai off the back of a holiday. I decided that there was gonna be no perfect time to make this move. And so the only perfect time was this time. The only time we're guaranteed is now. Yesterday's gone, tomorrow's not guaranteed. All we have is now. And so I was like, now is the decision, now is the day, now is the right time. And I had to be prepared to let go of this amazing man for this new adventure and I had to be prepared to say no to something, to say yes to something else. I had to be prepared to lose something, to grab something. The first thing that I discovered is you've got to trust the journey. I would be lying to you if I was like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. And, you know, I know exactly what's going to happen. I have no idea, child. <laughs> right? All I know is that I am the gift. 
The job isn't the gift. The business isn't the gift. You are the gift. The man isn't the gift. You are the gift. And so I have to trust that what God has put in me, all the gifts, all the talents, all the abilities, all the experiences, all the heartaches, all the great times, all of my experiences are going to enable me to be successful in this new chapter. And so you've got to trust the process. And as I leave the UK and say goodbye to my comfortable comfortability, and as I let go of somebody who I care about very deeply, I am stepping, trusting that God has got me. And you know, I'm gonna wrap this vlog up by saying sometimes you're gonna have an Abraham moment. For those of you who don't know who Abraham is, Abraham's a character in the Bible who God told to pack up everything, to give up everything, to get rid of all his riches and to go to a new land. And I feel like I'm having an Abraham moment where I'm just letting go, trusting the process and going to somewhere new and knowing, not hoping, but knowing that whatever's coming next is gonna be phenomenal because I'm the one there, <laughs> okay? So I just want you guys to Trust your process. Trust that if God has given you a word, a vision, a dream, a desire, then it's gonna happen. But you've gotta get uncomfortable and you've gotta be prepared to say no so that it opens up all of your yeses. So this is one of my first vlogs of my London to Dubai adventure. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Peace.